Hi, today I will show you how to use uh, in this walk um, partial routing decisions, how to model service points, how to use dynamic uh, potential, uh, how to deal with queuing, and some alternative route choices. So in this model, what I have is just an an area where they spawn and an exit and there is just a static routing between the two. If I run the model, <laughs> just basically they find the shortest path. If I just make these areas a bit narrower, so they can't, only one can get through in the same time. Um, and I increase the input so you can see some queuing happening. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They are not going to find another alternative route. So to do that, you can just go here and click Use Dynamic Potential. These settings allow you to calibrate the way it works. When it's on, it's a rectangular shaped. Okay, and now they start to find alternatives and go around. This way, you don't need to model a lot, but the computer will be much slower, so your model will slow down significantly, especially if you have a large number of pedestrians. Now I switched it off. You can use partial routing decisions. For that, you need to create an area, which I will just use to place on the partial route. <laughs> and by default, it is using static, so just a relative flow. So I created two, and using the intermediate points, I just set one to that one, one to this one, this way. Everyone will just uh, go 50-50. Um, yes, so the next one I want to look at is travel time. You can use different ways to model that or to use that travel time, that data. So I just go with the logic that it logit that's a smart one. Um, average of the last, so it will average the last 10 pedestrians that actually arrived. So um, to do that, it's just basically this, and you start running it. What you can see is here now assigns more, so it gets slow, then assigns more to the south, then the south gets slow, then it signs to the north more. So it, it has some oscillation and you can tweak these settings, um, you can change it or influence it by um, adjusting the, the these parameters and that parameter. Uh, the density is probably another important one. I stay with the logic to that again. For this one, you need to have two areas where it measures the, um, the density. Just something to note, the area of these, um, the size and the area of these areas needs to be reasonable for the evaluation. So it's 10 and 11. If I go to list, pedestrian traffic, partial routes, here, and you check pedestrian route choice areas, you can just add, and for this one, I select 11. <laughs> and for this one, I select 10. Okay, now if I run it, you can see how the relative flow changes. If I want to demonstrate, that removing it, the density will be very nice on this one. So probably more will get assigned into this route.
since it can't see um, it does, uh, the density there. The same settings you can use with the quantity, just the quantity. Um, what I want to show now is, so I won't show the formula. I already have a video about formulas. Um, and if you are interested to have uh, one, how formulas work, let me know and I can make one for this work as well. But that is just on its own video. Uh, the service point selection. So you use this if you want to model something like a passport control or a supermarket checkout or a, or a kiosks or something like that where you have basically multiple points for service and people queue there. But also if you want, they can queue before. So you can like basically split queuing into multiple areas. And the default setting is zero people are queuing there. And so they will proceed to the service point if there are no more than zero people queuing. So if there is one people already being served, people will be held up in a queue in the area where the partial routing decision is located. And so if we do that, we need to make some changes. We first, we need to set up queuing and, and we need to set up time distribution for the dwell time. Okay. If you use service point, you must set up the intermediate points for the static route. So when you have queuing, basically, if you create queues, you must set up the static route onto that area where you have the, part, the partial uh, to, so pedestrians will know basically where to queue. <laughs> Not to where to queue, but to, you know, when they need to queue. <laughs> You need to direct them onto that area. Um, so now that's done, we also need to set up queuing on this one. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so the queue got out of control. Let me just reduce a little bit. Okay. And I want to talk about the um, this vector, the orientation vector. So if I run the model again with a bit less number of pads, what you see is they this is where they queue at that, that point, and that is incorrect. Uh, this vector is created when you create an area. The first two clicks defines the, um, the vector where it will point to. So I clicked where once, I click here again, so the vector will point to the right. Now if I finish it, and I set it to Q, you need to set it up, and the wireframe needs to be on to show the vector. So what I do, I just basically replace that with this. I just need to move this as well. All right. Now they queue from the right angle. And if I increase now the this, if I put three, that will mean <laughs> pedestrians will be held up here in a queue as long as there is one people being served and three queuing. But once, uh, so unless there is less than three people queuing. So if there is more than if there is already three people queuing and one being served, they will be held up in the queue. Okay, let's just see now. If you don't want to have a queue there, if you want this point to be only like a guide where um, people will be split into places, um, you can put a huge number here. <laughs> This way, you just basically create two long queues. If you want to control queuing, or you want to influence queuing, 
what you can do is you right click add when the queue is set up of course and if you the queue straight is um, can be set between zero and one zero is not straight one is very straight one when i say not straight it means like a snake queue order zero is not ordered uh, one is highly ordered <laughs> so um, like grouping together closely and then more gaps and things like that by default it is 06 and 07 so now if i just uh, run what you see is they find the queue nicely what i want to show you is what these settings mean static potential and direct line so direct line makes the model run faster but if you have an obstacle <laughs> or if you have obstacles like a, an s shaped or a snake shaped queue and an airport for example you can't use direct line you must use static potential because when direct line have, uh, is used when from the decision to join the end of the queue pedestrians and let's say the end of the queue here pedestrians will take the shortest path or route but it is not available since there is an obstacle as you see they are just basically splashing to the wall so what you do is you set it to static potential it will make your model slower but uh, there is another settings you can play with this is the approaching direct line radius what it does is um, within this distance um, direct line will be used so if it is one meter or oh, sorry let's put 10 meter it will be exactly the same as i would use a static potential in the 10 meter area so in this case it shouldn't make any difference so they still splash more or less okay i uh, have 10 meter so probably if i increase it a bit more yeah they can find it if i make it a bit bigger it won't happen probably still yeah, they just splash to the wall so what you need to just consider when you use static potential to just reuse it um, as long um, to to uh, it's better not to reduce it too much because then it still makes too sure uh, it still makes it too slow but what you want is maybe to keep it one meter two meters so try to experiment maybe use as high as possible um, and yeah that that would be the one <laughs> so i hope this video helped you to understand how these settings work um, and just again when pedestrians get into this area they will be assigned with a route so you can't mix uh, or after that point um, they will queue so you can't merge them again and to again pile up uh, to get them, direct, get them directed into each one so you can't do such thing once they are here they will be given a route and on their route it says queuing so they will join that queue and when they go to that queue you might need to consider the static or direct line decision if you have obstacles if you don't have obstacles you can go with the direct line and your model will be faster and also just one more thing to remember you must if you use service uh, you must um, add an intermediate point here <laughs> if you don't use service point you don't need to use the intermediate point there but then make be sure that if a pedestrian doesn't uh, if if this area is not under pedestrian route so if it is like this pedestrian will just walk from here to there and will be not touching that one so they will just do that i hope this was helpful please like and subscribe if you want to support the channel uh, consider checking my patreon um, community and join uh, as a member thank you very much